Okay, we're ready to get started. Let me get the camera situated. That's kind of crooked. Okay, hopefully that's where you guys can see it. Good morning, I'm glad all of you can make it. I'm really proud of you guys. So many of you are making it to the online classes. I hope that it's making a big difference for you as far as understanding. Today we're going to review for the test. And it will be over chapters one and two. So um, I put a few things on there. You may have noticed in my stat lab that I have, there's, sorry, my pen just fell on the floor, that I have uh, a learning catalytics quiz for you to take. And I also have, and that counts for a grade. The learning catalytics quiz is a review quiz. It counts as a grade towards your quiz average. And then I also put on there a thing, I forgot what I call it now. It's like a memory quiz over definitions and symbols. And on that, I really set that up as a timed quiz. What I want you to do for that is try not to use anything. It doesn't count as a grade, so it's purely just to get yourself up to speed, kind of like using flashcards to make sure you're fully prepared for the test. And it's mainly, it's only going to uh, quiz you over definitions and symbols, all right? So it's not everything that's on the test. It's just trying to get you to the point where you have those things memorized. And you can take it as many times as you want to, maybe make it a game, see how quickly you can get through all the questions. I have a 30, I think I have a 30 minute time limit on there. But if, um, if you're going to like set a goal to try to finish it, um, maybe five minutes. So that would be something to work towards, sort of like a game. See if I can get through this quiz without looking at anything. So not your notes or because the goal is to have these things memorized so that when you're taking a test, you don't have to spend uh, brain energy and time trying to remember definitions and symbols. All right. So take that as many times as you need to. Try to improve your, your time each time. And don't use any notes or handouts or anything. Remember, this isn't for grade. This is like flashcards to help you see if you have these things memorized. So I'm going to talk about what's on the test, and then I'll answer questions on anything. So um, first, let's talk about what's on the test. So there aren't a whole lot of questions on the test from chapter one. Most of them are from chapter two. Um, some big things that you need to make sure you know how to do is complete um, a frequency distribution. There is a question. There's going to be a question on the test, and it's going to be worth more points than any other question it has so many parts so make sure that you practice on those questions and I think it I want to say it's 2.1 um, where, where they have you fill in all the columns of a frequency distribution practice on those okay um, make sure you know how to find um, mean median mode uh, range. Let's go ahead and add class width in there. Really, that's, I know what we'll do. Let's uh, say on the frequency distribution, an important part of that is knowing how to find the class width and set up the classes with the bound, with the limits um, and or boundaries or both. Okay, so practice on those both. So make sure you know how to find the class width for a frequency distribution. So then know how to find compute mean, median, mode, range, 
variance and standard deviation. And really, I should add to that um, Z scores and quartiles. And that right there, if you notice, that would be several questions right there. On the test, there are about uh, 20 to 25 questions on the test. Some are multiple choice, but many are not. Many are where you have to find the answer. Some of them will ask you to show work. And remember, I put a couple of show work problems for you to practice on in the 2.5 homework. Make sure you do those and practice showing your work. If you would like for me to look at your work and see if it's OK, always feel free to email me and say, hey, can you look at my work that I put on 2.5 number whatever number it is, and I'll be happy to look at it. And I have the ability, I can go in and look at your work, and I can actually write notes on your work. Like I can say, you need to show this, you didn't, or you didn't write the formula, um, make sure that you box your answers, and I can give you feedback on your work for that. Um, the questions are worth different amounts. So when you're taking the test, remember I told you this frequency distribution was going to be worth a lot of points. I think it's worth 10 points. Many of the questions are only worth one point. Some of them are worth like three. And some of them, I think there might be one or two worth five points. Um, but the reason why they're worth different numbers of points is because there's different amounts of difficulty. So a question that asks you, what is another word for the mean should not count the same as a question that asks you to compute the variance because it's a different amount of time. So you can kind of think of it the, the, the questions that would take the most time are going to be the ones that are worth the most points. Um, another thing I needed to tell you is make sure you practice on the Proctorio practice quiz. Please, please do this first. I just gave a test to my pre-calculus class, and I had given them a proctorial practice quiz, and I ended up telling them it was required because I had a few people start the test, and they couldn't get proctorio to work. They hadn't practiced. They, haven't dub they hadn't double-checked how to get it to go, and they had issues, and a few people are going to have to let that first test be the one they dropped because they didn't work where they weren't proactive about practicing. So make sure that you do this. I would say do it today or tomorrow so that you can get help from me on that. So your test will become available on um, can't remember if I was making it available. I was either making it available Saturday or Sunday. Um, I can't remember. Let me see if I, oh, I left that folder downstairs. I may have to go get that. But it's going to be available this weekend. I'll tell you for sure after the break, okay? So it's available Saturday or Sunday. And then it's going to be due um, on I can't remember that either. I can't remember if I made it Monday night or Tuesday night. So um, I need to find that out for you. Let me see. I bet I can look at it here. Sorry, my memory's so bad. Um, another thing, you will have one attempt and it will be timed. We'll have two hours. So let me look this up real quick on uh, my laptop. And in the meantime, Kendra, did you have a question? Yes. Um, is when I take the test, am I able to take it early? Oh, so okay. If I take the test before, and what if I fail it, am I able to retake that again? No, there's one attempt. 
But the proctorial quiz, this practice quiz, you have unlimited attempts. So you want to use that to practice on proctorio. And let me see what I did on this. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't said that yet. We're not going to have class on Monday. I will probably make this available on Saturday at some time. Um, we're not going to have class on Monday because I'm going to allow you to use class time to take the test if you want to. Um, so then we will have we won't meet again until next Wednesday formally. Um, and then the test will be due. Uh, I'll probably make it due. See, I'm giving you Monday to take it. So. Whether I started Saturday or Sunday, I usually give a four-day window. So if I started on Saturdays, then it'll be Tuesday. And um, it will definitely be due before class. I will send you an email. I will send everybody an email. So watch for the email. Watch for the email in which I tell you exactly, I'll tell you exactly when it will be available and exactly when it will be due. But it won't be due before Monday, that's for sure. Uh, so it will be at least due, the earliest it will be due will be Monday night. Okay? So uh, probably I like to give people a weekend, a weekend day and a weekday. To, so that if you work on the during the week, you can use the weekend, and if you work during the weekend, you can use the week. So um, I try to give you a couple of days there where you can do this. You you do have to do this in one sitting. Okay, so you can't stop and then come back and finish it later. So notice you're going to have this two-hour window. You have to start it and end it. You'll be taking it, you will be proctored while you're taking it, which means there is a video created of you taking your test. So I'm just going to tell you what that video shows me when I watch it. I can watch, I see you, I see what's on your computer screen, and I can see, uh, I should see you only holding a calculator in your hand. No phones. So you will need to put your phone, you will need to silence it and put it out of the room or out of the way where you can't reach it, right, so that you won't be tempted to do that. Um, again, make sure that you do this proctorial practice. Let me, I'm going to look real quick and see who has done that. So I only have I only have three people who've done this proctorial practice. I have a question too. Yes. So because this test is proctored, if there's something that I'm doing, is there any sound? Because I won't be able to hear if you're trying to let me know something no. or. No, there's no sound. Now you are supposed to have your microphone on. It's it's not proctored by a person, okay? What happens is it records a video of you in front of the screen. It also at the same time simultaneously records what's on your computer screen. But there is not a person there watching you. So what happens is that later after you take the test, I can pull up the video and I can watch you 
take the test. And I can see what's on your computer screen at all times. And I can also see what websites you visit during the test. And by the way, you're not supposed to visit anything except the only websites you should be on are Blackboard and my math lab. Those are the only ones. Nothing else should ever get pulled up while you're taking the test. You should be in front of the camera the entire time. Um, you can use any calculator you want to. That's fine. Uh, I will send you very specific directions about taking the test. Please make sure, and I'll put it under tests. So um, let me see. So be sure to watch for the email. Now, you need to do this. Do that proctorial practice before Saturday. And then don't wait until the last minute. So if you have until Monday at 11.59 to take the test, do not wait until Monday at like 9 p.m. to take the test. All right? The reason I've given a big window, and part of the reason is so that if you have any problems or your Internet goes down, we can take care of that. All right? last minute then if there are any problems you're stuck that's going to have to be the test you drop right so there is no taking the test later because I tried to get on at 9 p.m. on Monday and I couldn't do it all right so you need to do this proctorial practice do this before Saturday Everybody, I know it doesn't count as a grade, but that's a good thing. This is giving you practice in proctorio. It also gives you practice showing your work. And again, if you would like for me to look at your work to make sure that you're showing enough work, I'd be glad to. Just tell me, could you look at my proctorio practice quiz? I'll look at it and see what your work looks like and give you feedback. That's fine. That's partly why I have it on there is for you to practice. And then um, you will take the test in one sitting. You'll have two hours to take the test. You can take it any time from the time it's available until the time it ends. You will access the test through Blackboard under tests. Okay, now I have had some problems like this before where people um, tried to access the test, they tried to click on it in my math, in my stat lab, and if you do that, it's going to ask you for a password, and you don't know the password. So you have to access it here. It puts the password in for you if you access it correctly. Also, you can't go down and access it by going straight to Proctorio. That's not how you access it. You may have had other teachers have you access it that way, but that's not how I have it set up. For our class, it's going to work just like this proctorial practice quiz. So that's why it's really super important for you to practice on the proctorial practice quiz so that you know exactly what to expect, what's going to happen, how you're going to get into the class, what you're going to have to do, and how it's going to proceed from there. Okay? And like I said, also under tests, I will also have instructions. So also under tests, look for instructions. So the test will be under tests and the instructions for the test will be under tests. All right. So. Um, okay, so I don't well, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, so let's see what questions you have. Kendra, what's your question? Okay, so when I take the test, I'm not really sure um, if something um, happens, would I have, have any excuse, like if I have to leave the room or there's something that interrupted, is that going to cause a conflict? taking that test. I think, uh, Chloe, can you repeat that? 
if um, something happens where I have to leave the room or something, is that going to cause conflicts with my test taking? Yes, it will. Try not to leave the room. If you, if there is an actual emergency where you have to leave the room, then you're going to need to contact me somehow immediately, whether you call or email or state because you should have a microphone on. So if you can state, um, Or if, if you have to leave the room, you should be going immediately and somehow figuring out a way to contact me and let me know. You should not be leaving except in an emergency. So for that reason, let's talk about setting up to take the test for a minute. You want to make sure you have a comfortable place, right? Don't have the window at your back because that makes your face dark, all right? But you can be looking at a window. Like right now, I'm looking at a window. You can see my face. But if I were to stand in front of the window, you would not be able to see my face. All right? Make sure you're in a comfortable place, a place where you can be comfortable for two hours. Bring a glass of water or a snack if you feel like you're going to get really thirsty or need to eat during the two hours. However, don't drink too much stuff because then you'll feel like you need to go to the bathroom. And I don't consider that an emergency during this unless you get sick. So you want to be ready to sit still and take that test in one sitting. You cannot get up and leave and come back. All right. So now it's not going to kick you out of the test, but I will see it on the recording that you left. And if that happens, then your test may be nullified and you may not get credit for what you've done. So, or I may only give you credit for what you did up until the point where you left. I could do that because remember, I'm going to be able to see your screen and I'm going to be able to see what you've done prior to leaving. So we're not getting up and leaving during the test unless it's an extreme emergency. Just like if you went to the classroom. Okay. So think of it like you're going to class. You're showing up in the classroom. You should be dressed as if you've gone to class. You should be sitting in a desk as if you've been as if you're going to class. You should have everything there that you need as if you went to class. So have your formula sheet, have your um, calculator, have your pencil. If you want, um, I don't think you need rulers or anything for the questions you're going to do. Definitely have your scratch paper though, because when you're taking the test. I want you to number and show all work on paper. <laughs> now, you may not have to do anything with that because if everything goes well, I won't need to see that. But I already had, I had two students who took my pre-cal test over this past weekend who, if they had shown their work on paper and numbered it, they would have been able to get credit for some things that they ended up not being able to do during the test because they ran into some problems. So that's why I've been really pushing you while you're taking your homework to number and show the work for every problem. Don't just click on things on the computer. You need to pretend and act like it's a regular class with regular homework and that you're only using this device, this computer, to check your answers. All right? And then on the questions that ask you to show work, you need to make sure that you click on that show work and show the work that I ask for. So I will give specific instructions in the problem about what I expect to see in the show work. Just like I did on those two questions in 2.5, you're going to see similar instructions on the test, not on every question, on about, I think I ended up with about five questions or so where you're going to have to show your work in my stat lab. But for every question, you should be numbering and show your work on paper because Sometimes there's situations where I need you to take a picture of that right after the test and send it to me. I've had a couple of issues during my pre-calculus test. 
And one of them, I, he said, one of the students had some problems with his show workspace. And so I said, well, if you numbered and showed the work for it, take a picture of it real quick and send it to me. He said, well, I didn't do that because when I couldn't, when I couldn't get into the show work, I just skipped that problem. And I thought, no, 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 that's not what we do, okay? What we do is we number show the work on paper just in case the teacher is willing to look at it and give credit for it. I'm not saying I'm, I will for sure, but guys, cover all your bases, all right? Pretend, so you come and, and you have everything ready before you start that test. You have no windows behind your head. And guys, if please take it at a desk or sitting up. Don't take it laying in bed, okay? You may be wondering why I'm saying that. Just take my word for it. Pretend you're going to class, all right? Pretend I'm going to see you in person because I am, all right? I'm going to see you. So dress appropriately. Um, smile and wave if you want to. When you start the test, if uh, only three of you have done the proctorial quiz, so you don't know this yet, most of you don't, but when you do it, it's gonna have you scan the room. I want you, when it tells you to scan the room, you're going to have to take either your webcam or sometimes your whole computer if the camera's embedded, and you're going to show the whole room. Keep that in mind when you set up your workspace, all right? You should not have any other computers in the room with you. If there's multiple computers or monitors, you need to turn them over. All right, so you want to make sure you have as clean a space as possible. All set up on the desk. You do need to scan your workspace, your desk as well. Your scratch paper and your formula sheet should be on the desk. So picture, Picture you're, you're scanning the desk with your webcam, okay? And here's your desk right here. And you scan around the room with your webcam. And then here's your desk. And I should see on your desk your calculator. There's the calculator. Your pencils. And your scratch paper and formula sheet laid out on your desk. On your formula sheet. So one of these is going to have writing on it, right? The formula sheet. On your formula sheet, you can write stuff on the back if you want to. If you, if you want to put a few notes on the back, uh, example problems that you think you um, need, you struggle with, you can put those on the back of your formula sheet. The formula sheet can be printed out, you know, that I sent you, or it can be written in by hand if you don't have a printer. You can copy those formulas by hand, whichever ones you think you need. If there was a formula you think you've got down that you don't need, then you don't need to copy it. All right? So, um, let me see. So it's going to have you scan the room. You may have your My Stat Lab tab open because I want you to log in before starting the test, and I'm going to send these instructions to you, so don't think you have to remember this or rewatch this video. So before the test, you're going to log in to my stat lab and open the class. Click on the class. Then just leave it open. All right? So you're going to leave that tab open. Then you're going to go back to Blackboard to access the test. Proctorio may ask you to shut that tab. That's okay. That means just close the tab, but don't log out, all right, because that can cause other problems. So if it asks you to shut that tab, then just shut that tab, and it should go ahead as it should go forward um, from there. Mia, you have a question? Um, yeah, whenever I took the proctorio test, um, I went to Blackboard and then I clicked on the link um, that it showed me. And for some reason, it wouldn't let me log into my math lab. It kept telling That's me to probably. register. 
you've done that. That's why I want you to log into my math lab before you take the test. So try that. Okay. Mia, okay. So that's why I want you to do this before the test. One. Log into my my stat lab and click on the class. Now you proctorial may tell you to close the tab later, but you'll still be logged in. Okay. So then I did two, it. I did it on a separate tab. Um, I, I just reopened it again um, during the test. So I wasn't sure if that went through on your end. Uh, does it, it does it show that? I did? Yeah. Just don't do it. Just do it in this order and make sure this works. OK, let's just have this order so that okay. you shouldn't have to. You should not have to reopen my stat lab. So we're going to have my stat lab okay. open, but all other tabs closed. So at the top of your screen, you should only see two tabs. You're going to have my stat lab open. And then you're going to go to Blackboard and you're going to click on that link in the proctorio quiz. So everybody practice on that proctorio quiz so that you can find out these things like Mia did. All right. Um, if so, Mia, when you were within the test, you said you you um, logged into my my stat lab from there. Yeah, while the test uh, began, I had to just open up another tab and log into my math lab through that. Um, so that's why I wasn't sure if my test showed on the system. I'm going to see everything you log into. So if you log in, if you have two tabs open of my math lab on there, I'm going to be able to see it. And my assumption okay. is going to be that you're trying to work another problem. You're trying to get help, which you should not be doing. You're allowed to have this sheet. I don't care on the on the proctorial practice quiz. I don't care, okay? But on the test, you should not be accessing my stat lab a second time to try to get help on a problem. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if I see that you're opening up a new tab after you've already gotten into the test, that will nullify your test. Do not open new tabs while you're taking the test. That same thing happened to me. It kicked me out and then I started the proctorial test and then I was able to launch back in, like you said, because I had already logged in. Okay. Good. So um, it is worth practicing. Plus if you haven't downloaded Proctorio yet, the extension, the practice quiz will take you through that so that um, you'll be ready to go for the test because you don't have to do that again when you take the test. I would take that proctorial practice quiz at least two or three times if it were me. Not only for the practice on the problems, but also on getting used to proctorio. But if you find yourself opening a new tab while you're taking a quiz or test, that's not good. That's going to get flagged and it may or may not kick you out of the test, but it's going to show me I'm going to be able to tell that you opened another tab. And my assumption is going to be that you were trying to access the helps in my stat lab while you were taking the test. And like I said, I don't care if you do that during proctorio, during the practice quiz. I don't care about that. But during the test, I am going to care. When the test is over uh, um, on Blackboard, it gives you an option to submit that test. Um, but what do we submit? Do we just submit a score or or do we just leave it blank and then you see it in my math lab? Okay, as long as you submit in my stat lab, you're going to be good, right? Um, there is a way, ideally, you want to go back to Blackboard and submit in Blackboard also, but if you don't, that's okay because I will have it automatically submit um, at, the end of, at, at the end of the time period. So all right. all right, thank you. Don't worry about the Blackboard part of it. Just make sure you take the test in my stat lab and that you submit in my stat lab. If you figure out how to submit in Blackboard, that's good. I think the only problem will be if you don't submit in Blackboard, the Proctorio thing keeps running. And so it keeps recording. <laughs> so um, even after you completed the test, that's the only issue there. 
So I would probably try to submit. Practice with that, uh, Mia. Practice with that in the proctorial practice quiz and see if you can check, you know, may, maybe do it another time and check if you can submit in Blackboard. And, and that, if, if they have a thing where you can submit in Blackboard, so after you submit in my stat lab, come back to Blackboard, click on the Blackboard tab, come back to Blackboard and see if there's a place for you to click submit there as well. It can't hurt and it will stop the camera at that point if you're able to do it. Kendra? No, I just want to get the test. Um, say if I don't remember a question on it, if I skip it and go to the next one, and then later I remember that um, question, can I go back to it or will I? I believe so. That? I believe you can. I think you can go back. I think you can skip a question and then come back and click on it later. Um, a way to test for that is on the proctorial practice quiz. Try it on there. So anything you have a question about. I have the proctorial practice quiz set up exactly like I'm going to set up the test. So if there's anything you want to know, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to do that? This is how you find that out, is you take the proctorial practice quiz and whatever you're able to do there, you will be able to do during the test. Now, some things that you're able to do, just because you're able to do it, doesn't mean that that's a good thing to do. Like opening new tabs during the test. You may be able to do it, but if you do it, then I may, that may nullify your test. So, but as far as, as I'm concerned, if you go back to a previous question, that's no big deal. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. So if you're able to do it in the practice quiz, you'll be able to do it in the test and that's fine. Because in real life, think about what you would be allowed to do on a test in real life, you know, face to face in person. You could skip questions and go back, right? But that's okay. But can you go look up something on the internet? Well, no, that's not okay. All right? Are you allowed to just get up and leave the room for however long and come back? No, that's not okay during a test. So if you're not sure if it's something that's okay, put it in that context. If I was in the classroom taking this, okay, would this be okay for me to do this? Would it be okay for me to be dressed like this? Would it be okay? Does everybody, hopefully you get the idea? Create a little classroom for yourself. I'm going to do everything the same way during that test that I would do if I was in the classroom. All right. And if you have any questions, you can email me, not during the test, because to email me during the test, you're going to have to go to another site. The only way you should do that, email me during the test, is if you have an emergency. Then I will understand you going back to... Um, Blackboard and sending me an email. But that would have to be only an emergency. Try your very best to have to be set to be able to sit there for the full time. Uh, make sure you tell people in your household. I need I have to have quiet so there should be no music, no noise, no TV. I need quiet and I need nobody else to be in the room because if somebody else is in the room with you, that nullifies your test. Just like if you're in the classroom, you're not allowed to have a parent or a sister or a boyfriend or something standing there in the classroom with you while you take the test. That's not a thing. So again, what you would do in an in-person test. Okay. okay. Another question I had. Oh, sorry. Um, another question I had. If for whatever reason, just example, if I um, wasn't able to pass the test. Is there some kind of way to have like a makeup grade or something after to help improve the grade or? Okay, so there's a way to earn an extra five points on the test. That's by having all your homework up to a 90 or above for that unit. There's a way to get 10 points on one test. That's by attending a tutoring session. And Kendra, I believe you've already attended a tutoring session, so I think you've got that taken care of. Um, but there are no 
uh, makeup tests. There are no retests. So I do drop one test. So if you do poorly on one test, that will be your drop. And then you have three other tests that will count towards your test average. But I don't give makeups and you only have one attempt per test. I let you use the formula sheet. I give you practice quizzes. I have make sure you do the learning catalytics quiz because it has some good practice questions on it for the test. And that vocabulary and symbols quiz I gave you to take like flashcards. Do that a bunch of times to um, make sure you have the basics sort of stuck in your head. Um, don't remember, don't use any helps while you're doing that, by the way. And like, don't use notes, even though, you know, I'm letting you write some, a few notes down on your formula sheet for the test on that, um, memory quiz, try not to use anything at all. So this is just a way of you, uh, sort of beefing up your statistics knowledge before the test. Let me see what time it is. Okay. I'm, uh, we only have 15 more minutes and I want to do at least one question uh, before that. And um, then afterwards we'll do more questions during the break. Think about what other questions you have during the test about the test and write them down. And um, I'll be glad to answer those then over. Let's see yesterday. Let's see is. No, I'm not seeing the person that was talking to. Okay. Um, if you have a question now, I will answer questions from my stat lab both now. So I'll do that for this last 15 minutes of this session. And that's all I will do in the second session today is answer questions from the homework. So let me get into my stat lab. My computer timed me out. Um, hopefully my math lab, it also timed me out. That just drives me nuts. So look through your homework and hopefully you've already found some things. If you had questions about it, you already know what they are so that I can cover those with you. And let's see. Okay. I'm ready. What questions are there about the homework? I had a question on the percentile. It was question number six. Okay, so that's the 2.5 homework, Christina? Yes, ma'am. Okay, 2.5 homework. We're going to look at that. Um, and is it okay for me to do the one that comes up on mine, or would you like to tell me what yours was? Oh, no, no, no. The example is fine. I just was a okay. little bit confused on that one. Okay, question six. Okay, so it says the data set below represents the ages of 30 executives. I can't write all 30 data values down. Um, and it says which ages are above the 75th percentile? So let's see, it says use a comma to separate them as needed. What I would do in this one is I would open this one up in StatCrunch. Now I'm not going to give you one like this on the test with that many data values. If I was going to give you one, um, let me, let me make up a shorter one. Okay. And we'll do a shorter one. So the, and, but what I would do in this one is I would open it up in StatLab and sort it. Well, actually I can do that. I'm going to, I mean, open up in StatCrunch. So I'm opening it. You know how you click on that little folder looking thing when there's data and I open it and I'm going to sort, you go to data. I'm going to sort it and put it in order because you have to put data in order to find the quartiles because it's like finding the median. In fact, the median is the second quartile. So, and there were 30, um, data values. And I'm just going to replace the current column. So I'm looking at this. I know there are 30 data values. That's an even number. Okay. So those 30 data values, imagine 30 questions. That means there's going to be two in the middle. 
and the two in the middle are going to be the 15th and the 16th data value. So I'm going to find the 15th one and the 16th data values. So the fifth, because I'm going to do the median first. I'm going to do Q2 first. So the 15th data value on mine is 48. And the 16th data value is 50. Since there's two in the middle, I'm going to average those to find Q2, which is the median. You have to do that first. So I, I, I could average those, or you can just look at it and say, well, I know what number's halfway. It's 49. So the median is 49. Now, it's asked, this particular question is asking about the 75th um, percentile. So that means I'm going to look at the upper half. The 75th percentile is the third quartile. This upper half, both halves have 15 data values in them. And notice when the median is halfway in between, that that number is going to go with the lower half and this number is going to go with the upper half. So like it's 50 and then there's a couple of 51s down to, um, let's see, my biggest data value was, um, my biggest one was 67, and that was the 30th data value. Now, there's going to be 15 data values here in the upper half. That's an odd number. So there should be one in the middle. The one in the middle will be my third quartile, which is the 75th percentile. So if there's 15 here, then that means I'm going to have um, 7 and 7. The eighth one in there is going to be the median. So I'm looking for the eighth one, starting with data value 16, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And actually, the seventh, eighth, and ninth ones are all 56. So down here, uh, let's see. The 23rd one is the middle one, and the 23rd data value, that's going to be the middle between 16th and 30th. Notice if I add 7 and add 7, you see it's exactly halfway. And that 23rd data value on mine was 56. So that is Q3, which is the 75th percentile. And going back to the question, it's, I, I believe it was asking how, what data values are bigger than the 75th percentile. And as far as bigger, 56 is that. I have uh, 57. I don't know. There's 57, 60, 65 and 67 and I'm going to see if that's what they want Christina I can see why it's a little bit confusing on this one I'm going to close this and it says the ages above the 75th percentile so that's this so they want the ages above 56 so there's more than one of these and more than one of these but I'm going to try just listing these four ages and see if that's what they want so I'm going to do that and we'll see if that's what they want. So I'm going to put 57. Even though there's more than one, I'm only going to write it once. 60, 65, and 67. And I'm going to see if that's what they want. The ages above the 75th percentile are. Okay, I'm going to try something else. It didn't like that. I had two fifty sevens and I think I had two sixties. I'm going to look 
look at that's a good question, Christine. I'm going to look at that and see what they want on that. I'll look at the help me solve this. That this I didn't ask this question on the test. I may ask you to find the 75th percentile, which would have been 56. I may ask you to find that. So there is a question where you'll have to be able to find the quartiles. I did not ask one like this, but I'm going to look at it during the break and uh, see what it is they're wanting us to do there. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Sure. Um, let's see. I think it's time for, no, it's not. We still have six minutes. What other questions do you guys have? I know someone had emailed me over the weekend, but I don't see her in class. And then that reminds me, let me check roll. Um, someone had asked me a question, and I need to go get my roll. It's downstairs. I will be right back. You guys think about what questions you have. I just have to run downstairs. And Ms. Haley, I was going to rewatch the video from yesterday on Z scores. You said that I can find those in Blackboard, the videos that you post? Um, or my math? I, I think I put them in my math lab. Okay, okay. Pretty sure. Okay, so today is the 16th. Okay, let's see. Ariana, I'm checking roll by the way. Cecil, raise your hand if I, when I call your name. Cecil um, Diamond. Was Ariana here? Kayla? Christina? Um, Kendra, Mia, Samira, Stephanie Garza, so Samira, are you there? Raise your hand there. Temperance. So Ariana and Samira, I don't see you. You're not raising your hand. So, um, okay, Samira, thank you. Um, everybody, make sure that you send me a copy of your of a photo ID, and you can you can if you send if it's your driver's license, it's okay for you to um, cover up any information that you don't want to send. By email, but I need your name and your picture is what I need. So basically any picture ID that you have with your name and your picture on it, you need to send that uh, before I will grade your test. All right. Okay, questions before the break? Oh, you guys can put your hands down. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, I was going to ask, um, after the break, is there a way that we can go over like a couple um, questions for like standard deviation and variance, just like sure. a quick overview? Sure, Diamond. In fact, uh, if you wouldn't mind, find a particular one that's in section 2.4, I think. Find a particular one so that we can look at it after the break. That's a great idea. Uh, okay. 
If I had to pick two things that I think are kind of difficult or the most difficult that you do that you're gonna have to do on the test that you should practice a few times before taking the test, it would be the frequency distribution from section um, 2.1, I believe, uh, filling in a frequency distribution. And the other thing I would practice on would be variance for sure. Um, uh, there's some other things on there. I, I'd say those are the two things that I think are the most complicated. Uh, you might look over Jeffy Chef's theorem and empirical rule, make sure you're familiar with those and what they mean. And um, let's see what else. Make sure you know how to find a Z score. Those things that I listed, you need to be able to find. I was just thinking of, but as far as practicing a lot, I would definitely practice the frequency distribution because it's worth a lot of points. Variance is only going to be like one or two questions, but still it won't be worth as many points, but still that's one of the harder things. And if you're shooting for 100, then be sure to practice variance and standard deviation multiple times. OK, um, anything else? Let me see what time it is. OK, it's 1130. But if you have something you want me to answer before the break, I will. If not, please look for questions that you have during the break. And when we come back, that's what we'll talk about. So I've already talked about the test and what's on the test and what you need to be able to do. Now that you know that, over the break, look through your homework and jot down the section number and the problem number for any that uh, you would like for me to work again in class. And I'm going to stop the